Good morning. This is a great day. I am so thankful to be able to address our audience on Facebook Live this morning for our regular service from the Goodsell United Methodist Church, as well as Power Chapel United Methodist Church. Uh, I am in a transition where uh, I will be going to Huntsville to Lakeside United Methodist Church, which is uh, located in Huntsville, across from Alabama A&M University, one of our great churches, historic churches, the home of uh, the late great civil rights icon, Dr. Joseph Echol Zolari, who was a great inspiration to me, who, uh, uh, encouraged me and also allowed me to get more deeply involved in civil rights by assisting him as well as the late great Reverend John S. Nettles in, in Anniston. Uh, I served as an intern with Dr. Lowry when I was in theological seminary at the end of the denomination of Theological Center with the Wings of Hope program. But also, I was able to speak at a national anti-drug prevention uh, convention in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, in Dr. Lowry's place. And I'm just certainly thankful for the inspiration of that great man. Uh, Reverend Kelsey Barnes will be taking my place, um, serving these two great churches that I love so much. Uh, they have become... Um, uh, a part of my heart, uh, just like family to me, and I praise God for them. And uh, I couldn't have pastored any better churches than Goodsell and Power Chapel United Methodist Church. I want to look at a word from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 27th to the 31st verse. It says, Why sayest thou, O Israel? And speaketh, O Jacob, my way is hid from the Lord, my judgment passeth over from my God. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that thou art the everlasting God unto the ends of the earth? He fainteth not, neither will he grow weary. There is no searching of, the, of his understanding, give it power to the faint, he increases strength to them who have no might. Even you shall faint and grow weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I want to talk about fly up like eagles. The Revised Standard Version says fly up like eagles. In fact, Isaiah was one of the great prophets of the Bible. In fact, he is reminding Israel of her greatness. God gave Isaiah the vision to see what other people could not see or would not see. In fact, Israel had been unfaithful and they had been disobedient to God. And as a result, they found themselves in slavery after being captured by the mighty Babylonian army. But after they served their time in cap captivity, the Persian general Cyrus gave them a kind of emancipation proclamation. And he allowed them to go back free again. And it was a prophet Isaiah who recognized God's hands in their downfall. But the prophet Isaiah recognized that God's hands would be in their uprising. And Isaiah did not beat them down. Isaiah did not criticize them for messing up. But Isaiah tried to lift them up and tell them to wait on the Lord. And I need to tell you that this word wait, wait is a word that is translated from the Hebrew. And the word wait does not mean to sit down and wait. It's a Hebrew word, 
nashaw, which means to hold on to, to cling to. Because sometimes God only comes in when we give up. And the late great Bishop Cornelius Henderson used to tell us at Gammon Theological Seminary that sometimes you got to go through some stuff in order to get to some stuff. And it is never easy when you're trying to make a comeback from a setback. It's always hard, a hard job of rebuilding, whether you are rebuilding a home, rebuilding a, a, a marriage, rebuilding a relationship, because you will be faced with forces not just on the outside, but you will be faced with forces on the inside. And that's why Isaiah is saying, why do you cry, O Israel, and speak, O Jacob? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment passeth over from my God. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that thou art the everlasting God of the ends of the earth? He fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. He increases strength to them who have no might. Even youth shall faint and grow weary. Young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall monitor with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah is saying that you will fly up like eagles because the eagle is a, the most popular bird in Scripture. In Exodus, God told Moses, remember how I brought you out of slavery on eagles' wings. In Deuteronomy, God told Israel he would raise up an enemy against them as swift as an eagle flies. In Jeremiah, God refers to horses as swift as eagles. In Job, Job said his days were passing away like eagles. In Proverbs, Solomon says riches fly away like eagles. In Matthew, it says wherever the carcasses are, there will be the eagles gathered together. Obadiah said that although the wicked shall build the nest above the stars, God will bring them down. In Deuteronomy, it says, as the eagle stirs her nest over her young and spread her wings and take them on her wing. God alone did Israel. And the reason why an eagle is such an awesome bird is because of his presence, because of his royalty because of his reputation of being the king of birds and because it lives way up in high and lofty places because of his power, because of his speed, because of his vision to fly above the rest of the birds as well as the forces of the world. And an eagle does not reproduce like other birds. Chickens and other birds reproduce Produce in flock, but you can't hatch eagles in a batch. With hormone treatments, chemicals, and steroids, you can hatch eggs from a chicken, and it will be ready for crunchy chicken in just a few weeks. But it takes time to produce eagles. Babies are born every minute, every hour, every day, every year, but eagles are not. And then... An eagle is a bird that flies by itself. Eagles don't fly in a flock. You only see eagles one or two at a time. You can see a crowd of buzzards anywhere, but not eagles. They fly by themselves. That's why Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays used to say at Moore House, I had rather go to hell by choice then to stumble in the hell following the crowd. And Dr. Mays used to always say, but to every man that open a way and a way, a highway and a low way, and the high so gropes the highway, and the low so gropes the low, and in between the misty flats, the rest drift to and fro, but to every man that open a way and a way, a highway and a low. Each man must decide which way his soul must go. And I'm glad God has some eager men and eager women who can run, walk, and fly by themselves. 
because to be an eager person, you have to walk with God. To be an eager person means you've got to be willing to be laughed at, talked about, sabotaged, and call everything but a child of God. To be an eager person, you've got to stand up for what's right, even if you've got to stand up all by yourself. To be an eager person, you've got to follow wherever, whoever, however God wants you to go, and even if you've got to go by yourself. Because it was Jacob who was alone when he wrestled with the angel of God and said, I won't let you go until you bless my soul. It was when Moses was alone when he saw the burning bush. It was when Elijah and Elijah was alone when they performed their greatest miracle. It was when Jeremiah and Gideon was alone when it was commanded to save Israel. It was when Amos was alone when he shook up. King Jeroboam, it was when John the baptizer was alone when he preached the kingdom of God was coming. It was when John the revelator was alone when he said, I see a new heaven and a new earth. For the old earth and the old heaven has passed away. It was when Paul was alone when he asked Jesus, Lord, what would you have me to do? And this writer here, Isaiah, was alone when he said, I have trod the wine press alone. And yes, there will be times in all of our lives if we're going to be like the eagle. We got to go by ourselves. And, and, and we all can fly high if we don't waste our time on petty, silly, and mundane things. And be determined to have vision like eagles because Eagle has a powerful vision. They can see what lesser birds cannot see. It can recognize a rabbit more than a mile away. It can see four times further than the average human being with 20-20 vision. And the eagle has two sets of eyelids, which makes it the only creature on earth that can look directly into the sun. It can see to both sides as well as it can in front for at least four miles. And that is just like a child of God because they can see what other folks can't see because they walk by faith and not by sight. And not only that, an eagle has power in his wings because it operates in a hunting territory between approximately 2,000 and 10,000 acres of land. It can fly to the height of 10,000 feet. It can fly at a terrific speed of 150 to 200 miles per hour to catch a fish, goose, rabbit, deer, and even a small bear and fly away with ease. And an eagle wings are so powerful that they can fly above the storms because you're going to have some storms in this light. It's a storm going on now, but we're going to have some inside storms in this life. And if you're going to be like the eagle, you, you, you have to fly above the storm. An eagle has that power in his vision. It has power in his way. And an eagle has power in the way it builds its nest. They, they build a nest on top of high mountains and in the nest, they put sharp objects, stones, glass in the nest so that when the baby eagles grow, it gets more uncomfortable in the nest and eventually they have to leave the nest. And when it's time for the mother eagle to teach them how to fly, she will push them out of the nest or drop them off at the top of the mountain and let them flap their wings so they can fly. And if, when it looks like they're about to fall from the sky and die, the mother eagle will swoop down and catch them on her mighty wings. And I'm a living witness. That's the way it is with God. Sometimes it looks like your enemies want you to fall. Sometimes it looked like you ought to fall. Sometimes it looked like you deserve to fall. But God has a way 
are swooping down and catching you on his mighty wings. Being an eager person is a lonely experience because you will be misunderstood. And what folks don't understand, they fear what people fear, they fight what people fight, they try to destroy, but there's nobody's job to understand you but you. Because when you don't know who you are, you don't know whose you are. And that brings me down to an old story about an eagle that lost her eggs. It was found by a chicken. And the eagle egg hatched in a barnyard. And the eagle came out bigger than the rest of the chickens. And so this eagle was born under chicken circumstances, grew up thinking that it was just another chicken. And he thought like a chicken. It dreamed like a chicken. It acted like a chicken. And when the chicken counselor at the chicken school asked the eagle, what did it want to do when it grow up? And the eagle said, all I want to do was to be like the roosters and cock a doo doo But all of the other chickens in the barnyard knew who he was and what he was and so they got together when he was not around and they said if you ever find out who he is all of us chickens gonna be in trouble and so they did everything they could to make him ashamed of himself they make fun of his eagle feet they make fun of his eagle beak they told him his feet was ugly they had little thin feet. They make mockery of his claws because they had little weak chicken claws. They talked about him and criticized him day in and day out until he started to feel ashamed of himself. He even thought about going to a chicken cosmetic surgeon to have his beak cut down so he can fit in and look like the rest of the chickens, but one day while he was pecking corn in the barnyard, he looked up to the sky and saw an eagle flying high with all of the grace and majesty of a mighty eagle. And he said to himself, I wish I could fly like that. But he remembered what the chicken counselor had told him in the chicken school, that his chicken IQ was not high enough to have big dreams. And so he bowed down his little head in sorrow. But that mighty eagle looked down and saw that little lost bird. And from the wisdom that came from age, he saw the problem and he swooped down and told that little bird, boy, I know you're kinfolk. You, you, you ain't no chicken. You... You, you, your, your clouds were not made to dig corn and worms and bugs. They're made to grab mighty mountains. Your eyes were not made to be limited to a barnyard, but you were made to look into the sun. And so I've stopped by to tell you today that no matter how bad we have been mistreated, you are not chickens, you are eagles. Even if you had to go to some chicken schools, even if you had to read some chicken book, even if you had some chicken teachers, even if you had some chicken friends, even if you had to work on a chicken job, even if you had to get paid some chicken pay, don't live like a chicken because you are not an ostrich to bury your head in the sand. You are not a buzzer praying on somebody when you ought to be praying for somebody. You're not a dog to just fly away. You're not a chicken just to run away. You are an eagle. One day when mankind was in the barnyard of sin and slavery, God sent a visitor from glory named Jesus who saved us from sin and condemnation. And he said that 
I've come that you might have life abundantly, more abundantly. And he also said, if I will be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Can't you hear Isaiah saying, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God bless you. God bless you. Keep your faith.